Hey guys, Nathan from Arms and Armor here. Today, I want to show you guys our Type L fighting axe. Now, I did a video about this last summer uh, in which I cut some tatami with it, uh, but I want to compare it to some earlier and some later uh, axes to give you a little bit of context on understanding these things. So this axe is our Type L fighting axe, right? For one or two-handed use, it weighs about a pound and a half. This thin uh, blade is, has a hardened edge. And you can, on some of them, you can see the hardening line on them. It uh, is sharpened down to a very fine uh, edge. These Type L axes have a leading point on them. So when you strike, you have uh, this point that essentially uh, meets the target first, right? So if you're targeting a person, right, you get this broad cutting area, but you also have this thrusting point and a hook uh, that can pull shields, right? So this was a popular kind of ax in the Viking period. Uh, we'd make an ax or an ash haft on it, which is subtly shaped here uh, uh, for the hands, and it's wedged with another piece of ash uh, to keep the head on there. So these are a pretty sweet ax. This is one of my favorite things. Hear the ring when I run it across the table. Doesn't really mean anything. It's just cool. One more time. Ooh, so pretty. Uh, anyways, these are super cool. So this ax, is from the Viking period, right? So this is essentially 10th century uh, technology. Uh, this would have been a dedicated warrior's weapon, not a tool, right? With this thin uh, blade, it was, it's really, it's like a cleaver, it's for fighting. Sometimes these pieces were highly decorated with silver inlay uh, or a copper Latin uh, inlay and intricate designs. For this ax, we leave it plain, uh, to keep the cost down. Uh, we'd rather have a super functional axe than one that's highly decorated but doesn't work very well. So uh, if you ever want one that's super decorated, we can probably do that. But this one uh, we typically make uh, in just plain uh, carbon steel. It's got a mild steel socket and a carbon steel blade. Now, if we compare this to some other historic axes, I'm going to put my gloves on here because I have some originals from the Oakshot Institute collection. Uh, we can see how axes uh, evolved over time. So this first axe I have here is a European Bronze Age axe from about 2,500 years before the Viking period. This is from the 15th century BC. Uh, you can see that this axe, rather than having in the socket a hole that the haft goes through, uh, this axe precedes that technology. Instead, you'd have a stick, a forked stick, that was usually part of a root ball that was shaped kind of like my arm here. You would take it and you would bind it around the ax with sinew or something that would shrink and hold it on there. All right, so this would have been a tool and a weapon. It would have been a high prestige and expensive piece uh, from that time. So Bronze Age axes, substantially different uh, from this Viking Age uh, ax, uh, but it serves some of the same purposes. Clearly, with this thick section, you're going to have a very different dynamic uh, using this. But uh, the bronze wouldn't hold up to being this shape. It needs a thicker spine because bronze, although it gets hard, uh, doesn't have any spring to it uh, like steel does. Now on the other side, here is this medieval uh, battle axe. Right, it's an axe. This one, it has a hammer on the back and a bearded blade. Right, so bearding on an ax means that essentially you have wasting here and then it comes down. So this part is the beard uh, that hangs down uh, below the head. 
So this medieval axe is heavily bearded. Now it's made of iron. And one of the primary differences here is that you started to have these longer throats on these medieval axes that the haft would go into. And you can see that the haft didn't come all the way out the top. Instead, there's probably a wedge uh, that went in there to keep it in. This also has a decorative cutout. You can see that the blade is relatively thin and fine on this, especially in the beard here. So I hold these uh, two up. You can see essentially that they are of a really similar size uh, for a fighting axe, but of slightly different design that changed over time. These Viking period axes uh, have these decorative flares and lobes uh, very frequently on the socket, which uh, were very common at the time and less so before and after uh, this period. So check out this axe. It's an awesome weapon. Uh, you can just about shave with it. This thing is so sharp. Oh, that didn't work. I'm holding it the wrong way. It's because you guys are looking. There we go. Crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, check it out. I'll talk to you later. Thanks.